Hey guys, so uh, happy September the 3rd. Um, let's finish this power supply for that TRS-80 Model 4 today. Um, if you haven't watched it, why well, go back and watch the previous video. Otherwise, this may not make too much sense. Uh, so anyway, yeah, but before we start, um, I think, uh, I think I'm going to change up this Septandy thing a little bit. Um, the last video I tried to, you know, record it and edit it and put it on YouTube the same day. And uh, that meant that I was editing it until like 9.30 and then it was, it, would, it was finally finished rendering around 11 p.m. and then I uploaded it. And um, not only does that uh, put me kind of late and will eventually wear me down, but um, nobody's watched that video, which I assume is because of its release schedule. So I think I'm going to start just lagging behind a day or two, because I can't do this every day anyway, especially this coming week. We're going to be busy chopping corn and stuff, so I probably won't get anything done uh, with this. But um, yeah, I'm going to lag behind a little bit and post them, you know, at a more reasonable hour, so maybe you guys will be able to enjoy them a little more easily. So, uh, without further ado, let's try to fix this thing. So, remember in the last video, everything's working except this 12-volt uh, output that runs the uh, CRT analog board. And uh, I had plugged this 2-amp 12-volt wall wart into that circuit instead and everything was running fine off of that. We had some problems with disk drives I think, but I mean like as far as power we had everything powered and the main board seemed to be working as it should. Um, so uh, I tried a different wall ward and it was only giving me 8 volts. Exactly the same model of wall ward, so I don't know why this one was acting up, but um, I haven't popped this one apart yet, but this is the one that was working. So what I want to do here, I think, um, I'm not smart enough. I can't find a schematic for this particular power supply. I've found a couple of schematics, but uh, for different power supplies, apparently they put several different kinds in these things. Um, but I haven't found one for this one. And even if I had found one, I'm kind of dumb, and I'm not sure if I could have um, figured it out from that anyway. So. What I'm going to do, I think, is just build uh, the wall wart board into the power supply. Um, and I'll have it uh, on some jumper wires. The, the bottom of the case is down about here. And there's some vents. And I'll put this piece of plastic underneath of this thing. It doesn't really need it because the case is plastic, as long as I don't have the 120 volt section, you know, over the vents where somebody could potentially stick something in there. The low voltage section would be alright, but I'm going to put this piece of plastic under it anyway. And then I'll just zip tie it um, down through some of those vent holes, and I'll run, uh, I'll run some wires uh, from both the 120 volt input and the 12 volt output back up into this power supply. Um, and we'll modify it slightly so that the CRT uh, uh, header here is uh, powered by this instead of whatever is burned out on this. So um, the way I think I want to do that is uh, remember those uh, AC line filter capacitors that we uh, pulled out of there in the last video? Well, those um, go across the AC line. Well, this one doesn't, but well, it, it kind of does, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. So there were a couple up here, a couple of those AC line filter capacitors. And um, this one right here, this one right here, um, it was, it's directly across uh, the, um, the AC inputs. There's a, there's a fuse here, and it's, it's, it's on the other side of the fuse, but it's directly across here. Now, there was this great big one this great big line filter capacitor right here that we took out, it's not um, directly attached to the uh, to the line input on this thing. It's it's on the other side of this little transformer here, and I think I think that that transformer is just a little isolation isolation transformer. And then there's a uh, a, a, a big disk capacitor here on the other side that's also across there. So. Um, I don't want to tie into that one. I don't want to be on the wrong side of that isolation transformer. I'm just going to hook in right there, directly on the other side of this fuse uh, for the AC, and it will run into the top part of the wall wart supply. There are a couple of holes here 
that have nothing in them um, that I can uh, I can suck the solder out of, and I can just solder a couple of wires in there. I think so. That will uh, that'll do the job with that. There's a there's an inline fuse here too for the one side. I'll I'll probably have to pull that out. Um, but anyway, yeah, um, right. And then uh, for the for the uh, that's the AC input side, and that that'll be switched on and off just like the rest of the power supply by the switch um, on the computer. And then the uh, the DC side, the 12 volt outputs down here, and um, I'm gonna have to actually modify the board slightly to make that work the way that I want. Unfortunately, now for for the uh, for the negative side, I can just tie this to ground uh, anywhere. Uh, well, I mean the not the chassis ground, but like the power supply ground, which is probably tied to the chassis ground anyway. But it'll, it'll be better if we tie it to the proper ground here. Uh, I'll probably just find one of these holes. Well, that's too hard to get to. Um, so there's 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 some unused holes here in a couple of places that I might be able to just um, hit uh, hit the ground with. Um, but for the uh, for the positive side of this thing, um, I, I, I want to uh, see. It's, it's got this great big filter capacitor um, right on the other side of these pins, and I want. I think I want to leave this big filter capacitor in the circuit um, because uh, this supply uh, will be powering the uh, heater elements in the CRT, and um, with newer CRTs, especially or with newer tubes, I meant to say with newer vacuum tubes, especially the ones that you get in Russia nowadays. Um, a lot of the times if you apply power to them, all of a sudden, just like there's when there's no transition between like no power and full power, uh, the filaments flash. And that's really hard on the filaments. That'll make them burn out prematurely. And um, I'm sure that this tube, being probably having been made in the United States or Japan or somewhere other than like China or something or Russia, is probably pretty good. But um, I want to try to preserve those filaments anyway, and I think that uh, leaving this great big filter capacitor in the circuit will ki possibly kind of smooth out the, that, that ramp up of power there and, and be a little gentler on the... Uh, filaments in the CRT. So um, that means that I will have to come down here on the other side and uh, is this the right one? Yeah, and uh, cut um, cut one of the traces here, which I hate to do, but um, there just isn't really any better way to do it. Um, I'll just have to cut one of these traces and then solder the uh, positive lead on here somewhere. Um, there's an empty there's an empty spot right there that I could use that's just filled with solder. I could suck that out, but it's that's going to be impossible to get to. It's back behind this this heat sink here. So I guess I'll just I guess I'll just hit it on. Uh, on the one side of the uh, uh, filter capacitor here. Yeah. Okay. So uh, let's uh, let's get started, shall we? If you haven't been bored to death and quit watching yet, this is the working wall ward right here, and unfortunately, they uh, they glue these things together nowadays instead of just molding them so that they snap together so they're a real pain in the ass to get apart. I'm going to just have to take this sharp pick and pry until some glue comes loose. I'll, uh, I'll get back with you when I get this thing open. Okay, so uh, here it is exactly the same as the other one. Let's uh, see if we can get this board out of here. It's kind of a pain in the ass to hopefully I can do it without breaking anything, but it's it's in there tight and we have to pry it up past these little there we go. And then it comes out from under this hook and uh, the AC input is just these little tabs that push against the board here. It's kind of funny, so we're done with that and uh, I've uh, 
I've got my desoldering gun heating up and soon we will desolder this sucker. Well gentlemen, I have some bad news. Uh, I went to turn on all of my desoldering stuff to deal with this little guy and my super duper chinesium desoldering gun pardon the language, shit the bed. Uh, the fuse is fine. I opened it up. It's a, some kind of power supply problem. It's a switching power supply. I can hear it ticking. I've tried disconnecting things. It's nothing that's shorted because I, I guess I've tried all different combinations of shit. Connected and disconnected. And I cannot get it to go. So uh, this is an Anesty brand desoldering gun and uh, as you recall I haven't had this very long so I guess our Septandi the third video is going to turn into a trash for the cheap uh, desoldering station video review thing instead so yeah I'd, it's a ZD915 I don't know man I had problems with this thing since day one uh, the gun itself um, the uh, the tube that collects the used solder wouldn't come out of the thing without uh, taking the gun apart and uh, modifying it some and it I don't know it's uh, it's been a very useful tool I I don't think that I'll go back to not having a desoldering gun but um, I think this time I'm just going to to splurge on a decent one. I mean, you know how cheap I am. Well, maybe you don't, but I've got like Great Depression era levels of frugality going on. You know what I'm saying? But, but unfortunately, that means that we're going to have to put this project on hold. I don't want to try to desolder this with the soldering iron because uh, I have a sneaking suspicion that uh, that may have been what made this one screw up. I mean, I, I didn't check the voltage on this before I took it apart to try to use it, but I was only getting eight and a half volts out of it um, after I'd messed with it and I, I desoldered these wires, you know, I was going to just go ahead and hook it up to everything if things worked. But, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe I overheated this. There's an inductor right here, I think, underneath this heat shrink. Maybe I overheated that thing or something. I'm not sure what else it could be. Uh, but, uh, yeah, who knows, but I don't want to try to mess with this without a desoldering station. So, um, for this evening, I apologize for wasting your time, uh, but I think I'm going to quit for this evening in disgust. I'm getting kind of hungry anyway, and I need to go finish building fence because I think the rain is finally over with. So, uh, I guess, uh, next time we'll just go ahead and move on to fixing up the Tandy 1000s, even though that's probably not going to be as interesting as the Model 4, and I'm going to just go ahead and order a new desoldering gun, and if uh, expedited shipping isn't too stupidly expensive, which it usually is, um, but if it's not too stupidly expensive, I'll try to get it here um, relatively quickly, and we can get back to this thing before too long. So, I'm really sorry, guys. I know my videos, my videos are shitty in the best of times, but uh, this uh, this is extra shitty. So, yeah, I hope you'll forgive me. Have a lovely evening, and uh, the next one will be more interesting. I hope. Take it easy.